Hello, I am the Irish guy. And lads, who is your next signing? I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club, wade through the rumours and just narrow down statistically who is your most likely next transfer and just grade how good those players are going to be. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Dan Bentley, B+. Okay, look, I've already spoke about Arsenal's impending deal for Ricardo Calafiori. To me, I reckon he's going to be the centre-back version of Aquilani in the Prem. Anyone have a clue who Albert Aquilani is or was? Um, well, in English football, he was about as underwhelming as an omelette made from puppy sick. So look, this £42 million transfer from Bologna is on the verge of being completed any minute now. And I promise you, despite him having a quality-ish Euro 2024, this 22-year-old defender is going to be a very underwhelming flop. Even to look at him, he looks like some creepy tennis player from Cyprus who's in a relationship with his own sister. So look, I've already graded him as a D in a previous video. So instead, let's take a look at Arsenal's next signing after him. And it's probably going to be Dan Bentley from Wolves. With the Gunners chucking in a £300,000 offer. But why? Are we totally sure Mikel Arteta didn't just send a dude the wrong text? Was he instead just wanting to buy a birthday car for his wife? Lads, Bentley is a surprisingly decent goalie. I mean, when he burst into the Wolves team, to make five appearances over the last two seasons when he was making some brilliant saves at Old Trafford. I assumed he was some raw up-and-coming kid. No, he's... He's the same age as KSI. This is a 31-year-old man who has actually been at Arsenal before. He joined them in 2001 and spent seven years there as an academy goalie. I mean, with both Dan and David in the youth teams back then, there were probably more Bentleys in the academy than in the car park. So yeah, returning to the Emirates is surely an absolute dream for him. And the reason why this is actually gonna work is that this frees up Arsenal the chance to cash in on Aaron Ramsdale. Come on, he's a second choice goalie on 120. £20,000 a week. Bentley, by comparison, would probably agree to only get paid in cookies. He'll be a decent option on the bench. But crucially, if this means that Arsenal can flog Ramsdale for even £20 million, then this is a brilliant chess move. Oh, by the way, lads, subscribe! Pretty much it. Back in the video. Aston Villa, Jao Felix C minus. Lads, I already dedicated an entire Christmas video to the possibility of Aston Villa signing Jao Felix 18 months ago. But lads, a lot has changed since that scurryless rumour. Is this a word? Uh, I feel like Rory Jennings. But lads, Felix has since dipped his toes into the Premier League with Chelsea. Aston Villa have since smashed the way into the Champions League. So this transfer is no longer as wacky as it used to seem. Felix is a good player, but at 24, I can accept now that he's not going to reach the ceiling that he was supposed to when he became the fourth most expensive footballer of all time. Last season was an incredibly lukewarm campaign for him at Barcelona. Come on, he only started five of the last 15 La Liga games that he played in. So I moved Aston Villa to replace Moussa Diaby on the left wing. Villa are in talks with the man, but the transfer still won't make me say wow. This won't be like seeing Carlos Tevez joining West Ham or James Rodriguez linking up at Everton, because I don't actually think Felix is out of Villa's league anymore. I mean, people think Felix will cost crazy money, right? Well, lads, a year ago, when he joined Barcelona on loan, he initially accepted £345,000 a year. Yeah, because Barcelona were in a financial sick bowl, he was agreeing to a sixth thousand pound a week deal with a stipulation that his salary eventually be increased once Barcelona's financial situation improves. But still, I mean, the guy was on a 250,000 pound a week contract at Atletico Madrid, becoming a millionaire every single month. But last season, his Barca wages only rose to 66 grand a week. So maybe this kid doesn't have Oscar syndrome. Maybe money isn't his everything. So Villa, yeah, okay, make him the highest paid player at the club, sure. But 160,000 pounds a week max because we have seen him at Stamford Bridge. He is a technically gifted footballer, but he fitted well into Graham Potter's bunch of unmotivated, heartless misfits because he's also got the backbone of a squirrel's corpse. At Villa, he'd be pfft, meh. Bournemouth Wesley Frank at B. Okay, I I'm, I'm not sure. Bournemouth only seemed to have one transfer target after having bids knocked back by Flamengo for 20-year-old Brazilian right-back Wesley Franca. I mean, does that mean the Cherries are wanting to flog Max Aaron to the dance after all? I don't know. There's too many Brazilians called Wesley. I can't keep up. He's linked with Barcelona too. So I can only imagine if the Cherries signed him, then yeah, I guess he would be a coup. Brentford, Jacob Bryan A. Yeah, the latest chunk of transfer activity at Brentford is that both they and Everton are making contact with Leon for 23 years 
year-old Ireland international center back Jacob Bryan. That's for me. This guy was one of the most exciting, groundbreaking stories in European football last season. Come on, an absolute ignore the Crystal Palace reserve team nobody getting a move to European giants in Lyon. You would assume some scruffy ginger kid from Cork was only ever there to sit in the reserves, burping up croissants, but no, he played over 30 games. How them escape a relegation battle to finish sixth in the league? The guy scored five goals, including one in a cup final against PSG. Sorry, this is someone who looks like he should be working in his uncle's sandwich shop in Killy Beggs. What is he doing dominating French football? Keeping the likes of the supposedly world-class Dayan Lovren rotting on the bench eating chips. This kid is the absolute real deal. And so for the Bees to create an all-Ireland set back partnership of him and Nathan Collins. Oh yes, please. I'm telling you, Job is the real deal. I would love to see him in the Prem. Brighton, nobody. Literally nothing. Brighton aren't doing anything. Next, Chelsea, Philip Jorgensen D. So Chelsea are signing another first choice goalkeeper. It's absolutely crazy. How does club go 10 years of having Petr Cech as the undisputed number one goalkeeper? So now, they've gone through Courtois, Kepa, Mendy, Sanchez, Petrovic. Every Chelsea manager seems to want their own goalkeeper. And apparently Enzo Moresca has now decided to demote Georgia Petrovic to what, number three? And we'll be bringing in 17 million pounds, Philippe Jorgensen from Villarreal to compete with Robert Sanchez for the shirt. Look, he's a 22 year old Danish goalie. I mean, after Mats Hermansson at Leicester last season, clearly Moresca is obsessed with Denmark under 21 international keepers. I, I hope Kasper Schmeichelsson doesn't grow up to be a professional or he'll probably have an old Moresca pressing his nose up against his bedroom window and probably sneak a creepy camera into his teddy bear. Look, Jorgensen has only had one season. He played 28 league games for Villarreal last season and that's it. Look, he's a modern day goalkeeper who's got decent distribution. He's technically good with his feet, yeah, but he's still unproven. It is a risk. I just know he's going to be another name in the long list of Chelsea goalkeeping experiments that don't really work. He'll be on a crazy eight year deal, chaining him to the club for the rest of his 20s. I think he'll be very meh and he won't last more than a season of the number one. Crystal Palace is made a Sar D. Yeah, it looks like the Crystal Palace obsession with this made a Sar has finally reached a creepy conclusion. After this club chased this guy for years while at Watford, he's now 26 years old at Marseille and isn't this hype now in a bin? The guy scored just three league on goals last season. He had injury problems, loss of form. He's now apparently agreed a four year contract at Palace, but Palace still need to agree a 25 million pound transfer fee with Marseille. Palace finally get their hands on a Senegal international winger. It's a lot less exciting than it would have been three years ago. I don't know. I think it'd be pretty average. Everton, Jesper Lindstrom F. Apparently Everton have agreed a deal with Napoli for their 24 year old Danish winger Jesper Lindstrom. Someone who, um, Scored a big fat zero goals and zero assists in 29 games during his debut season in Italy. He was joining the Serie A champions a year ago and his absolute dog vomit end product helped them to finish an embarrassing 10th. So I'm not surprised Napoli have agreed to get rid. Everton fans are excited about the signing, right? But he is coming off a truly horrible season. I suppose he wasn't even allowed to come off the bench in five of the last seven Serie A matches of the season. He was given four embarrassing one minute cameos. I think his Napoli fate was sealed when he played 73 minutes and a woeful 4 0 defeat at home to Frozzy Known in the Coppa Italia last Christmas. The guy's confidence is probably smeared across the bottom of an egg omelette. This guy wasn't even an Everton priority. He was their third choice winger after losing out on Yankuba Minte and Jaden Filigin. Yes, Lindstrom was quality at Eintracht Frankfurt, but he was a Serie A joke. You're signing someone at an embarrassing low ebb in their career. At the minute, this guy's probably too scared to even ask for the football. This guy is going to be spending all season shirt. Working responsibility, hiding on the pitch, and overall looking like a petrified kitten. Major flop. Fulham Emil Smith Rowe A. So it looks like Fulham are wrapping up a 35 million pound move for Arsenal playmaker Emil Smith Rowe. And you know what? This kid is going to be a quality buy. Look, Smith Rowe's body is clearly made of mustard, but if Fulham could keep this 23 year old fit, he will instantly become their best player. I know he hasn't scored in either of his last two campaigns for Arsenal, which is insane because this is somebody who scored 11 goals during the 21 22 season. The fact he has not scored in his last 38 games for Arsenal, it defies belief because he does have an eye for goal. I know he does. I think he'll get the Andreas Pereira treatment and re establish himself as a complete Fulham star, Ipswich Town, Sammy Smodix A+. So Ipswich Town have already had a £6 million bid, knocked back by Blackburn for Republic of Ireland striker Sammy Smodix. But they're still in talks, and they're actually in a transfer battle 
against Leeds. To be fair, a £6 million offer for the championship golden boot winner is sort of hilariously disrespectful. I mean, he's still got two years left in his background deal. It's not like he's available for the price of a cream egg next summer. Surely this guy, someone who turns 29 in September, surely he chooses the glamour of a Premier League move over Leeds. He is off the back of a 33 goal season, so his confidence is going to be through the roof. This is like the opposite of Everton buying the miserable Lindstrom. Someone who probably burst into tears halfway through his medical. This would arguably be the signing of the summer. I think he'd even challenge for the golden boot. 15 plus goals? What? Patrick Bamford did that? Leicester City, Reese Nelson B. Yeah, apparently Leicester City are looking to tie up a loan deal for Arsenal winger Reese Nelson, which seems like such a Steve Cooper signing. Come on, he's someone who is a major, prominent, England underage international star. Price above eight years ago, he scored 11 goals in 11 games for the England under 17s. Who was the manager? Oh, you'd better believe it was Cooper. Wow, 11 and 11? How? I think Nelson will be every inch as good as Callum hudson Adoy was at Nottingham Forest last season. Another lost England underage star winger from the past, who Steve Cooper coaxed back to confidence. Cooper is like a sort of lovable babysitter for fallen English wingers. I mean, it is ironic that he's a football babysitter because if he was an actual babysitter. Now, looking at him smiling over your cuffs, I'd imagine the toddlers would probably even prefer to be babysat by the Papa Duke. But yeah, Nelson will be good. Liverpool nobody. Nothing. Liverpool do not have a single transfer that looks like it's on the verge of happening. Nothing. I mean, there was very half-hearted links to Real Sociedad's Japanese playmaker Takafusa Kubo, but the Real president just shut that down. So honestly, so far, nothing is happening at Anfield. How very depressing. Man City, James Trafford B. Yeah, I think we're about to see something truly insane unfold at Manchester City this month because apparently they are about to lose Ederson to Al Ittihad. And so we'll then dive back into the transfer market to re-sign James Trafford. You know, their former kid goalie who was just buried in a Burnley relegation avalanche last season. This transfer would look absolutely wild on paper. But Trafford clearly still has fans at Ittihad considering he did spend eight years of his life there. But what's the goal? Bring him back to sit on the bench behind Stefan Ortega as the new number one. If Burnley sanctioned this deal, then I think Scott Parker's hair might fall out from stress because it will mean he would have lost four goalkeepers inside one month. Trafford back at Man City on paper. It sounds like an uninspiring, gruesome deal. But I mean, it could be worse. The club are apparently also eyeing up Anthony Patterson of Sunderland. Some chunky lump of pizza who's probably, what, 16th choice England goalie? Somebody who looks like he still wets his bed? He looks like if Ilan Mesley or swapped cereal for cake. Trafford back at Man City. Well, after being molded in their academy, then he doesn't really need time to adjust to complicated pep ball. He's been learning that since he was 14. But you can chuck him in for the cup games and he'd probably be... Be all right, actually. Man United, Manuel Lagarde, A+. Plus. This would be the transfer of the summer. I'm sorry, but match that have already agreed personal terms with PSG's midfield rock, Manuel Lagarde. A snarling, all-action, Uruguayan defensive midfielder. A man with more bite than a pit bull. I mean, an actual pit bull, okay? I don't mean the tragic one screaming, let's make some noise in Vegas. This 23-year-old is like a mean N'Golo Kante with a nasty attitude. The guy eats tackles and is such an upgrade on the squishy, cuddly teddy bear that is now Casemiro. This man would absolutely elevate the way Manchester He's not at play, and he could actually turn Ericsson Hack's rocky reign into a success. Ugarte is that good, but it just makes me think when Ruben Abram had Ugarte, Jao Polina, and Mateus Nunes in the same sporting list midfield, three midfield monsters that could start next season at Manchester United, Bayern Munich, and Manchester City. How? How did that midfield not win the Portuguese league? It's utterly rock solid. Newcastle, Malik Thaw, A+. Finally, Newcastle have actually woken up to try and do an exciting transfer deal this summer. Remember what everyone was so suspicious about AC Milan? About how they must have known about Sandro Tonali's impending ban and so sold Newcastle a dud. Well, the Magpies are now choosing to return to Milan for another player, which is like going back to the same Indian takeaway, which made you barf into your mother's handbag. But no, Malik Thaw is a talent. 22 year old centre back who actually played against Newcastle last season in the Champions League. He's also had an injury hit season. I mean, a hamstring injury robbed him of 14 games. Boy, he is quality and has an asking price of 35 million pounds. The bank boys are apparently currently 10 million short of that figure, but if a deal can be agreed, then this Germany international centre back is another statement signing. I mean, let's thaw was actually Milan's plan B when he was practically a deadline day signing from Schalke in August 2022 after they had lost out on. Sven Botman. So for Newcastle, now have both, both guys who AC Milan, the club who worship centre-backs like no other. For Newcastle to get both guys who are on Milan's shopping list. Oh, wow. It's like 20 years ago. If Chelsea had wound up with Nesta and Stam. Get excited, Newcastle fans. This guy oozes class. 
Yikes! Nottingham Forest, Ramon Sosa D. Yeah, apparently Nottingham Forest are closing in on the signing of 24-year-old Paraguayan international winger Ramon Sosa. Wrapping up a deal to take him from Talerej de Cordoba from Argentina's Premier Division. He's a pacey left winger who can dribble, but nah, this is just another random Forest punt who just, uh, just won't work. Meh. Nah. Southampton, Brandon Thomas Asante F. Yeah. Apparently, Southampton are going to sign Brandon Thomas Asante from West Brom on an £8 million deal. He's a 25 year old Ghana international striker who netted 11 in the championship last season. Look, he's a downgrade replacement for Che Adams, who's randomly gone and signed for Torino. If this goes through, it'll probably score about twice. Not good enough. Tottenham, Yang Min Hyuk C minus. Okay, part of me is being cynical here. And uh, uh, I don't like it. Because Tottenham have conquered the South Korean market. They are probably the most talked about football club in that huge nation. And that's obviously down to one man, the Asian Brad Pitt. But with Tottenham Min creeping towards the end of his Spurs career, is it just blind coincidence that they're now signing another South Korean winger? Look, Tottenham fans probably know how fuck that feels because they surely want another son. He is an 18-year-old winger. Tottenham are signing in from Gangwon, where he scored seven goals in 24 matches. I have no idea if he'll be good enough. None at all. C minus. West Ham, John Duran, C plus. Look, reports are saying that West Ham are closing in on the deal for Aston Villa striker John Duran. If this does go through, then he is a physical beast of a centre forward who can smack a football. To me, this would be like West Ham trying to correct where the Sebastian Haller experiment went wrong. Somebody who really should have worked. Because Duran is a very similar player. I actually think West Ham will get this one right. He'll be a... 12 goal a season striker, the modern day Carlton Cole. Yeah, not bad. Wolves, nobody. Yeah, Wolves, like Brighton and Liverpool, aren't linked with anyone. How oh, very boring. Anyway, that's the one even. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. What do you think of your next signing? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get a chance to go away. I'll talk to you in a while.